biggest musical instrument till is back. It's Seiko Fair Season 5. Six days of exhibition and discount sale. Up to 20% off all musical instruments and PA systems. Date Wednesday 24th to Monday 29th November 2021 at the Forecourt of Sweet Music Showroom at Jamota Mall 7. Side attraction, product demonstrations, seminars, live performances and musical concerts featuring Reverend Yossi, Stella Seal, Quissy Oting, Seiko Sisters and, and many more. more. Entry is free and open to all pastors, musicians, instrumentalists, and all lovers of music. For more information, call 24 66 55820 Follow Sinko Fair on social media or visit www.sinkofair.org. This event is powered by Sweet Music. Prepare to shop big at Sinko Fair. Sinko Fair, the, the music, music lives here. here. All right, good morning to you all, wonderful listeners of Sweet Melodies 94.3 FM. The program is Keys and Strings, your radio music masterclass right here on your favorite station. My name is Daniata, and I'm very excited to come your way with another edition of the show. Today, I have a wonderful person with me right here in the studio, but I'm going to introduce him or I'm going to let him introduce himself very shortly. Before we go into everything we do, let's say a quick word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning. We commit today's show in your hands. We pray, Lord, that you use us to be a blessing. Speak your word to as many as are listening. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, so if you're just joining, the show is Keys and Strings, your radio music masterclass. And you can contribute to the show or you can send us a message right here on the show or after the show on our Keys and Strings uh whatsapp and telegram platform so if you are not already on how you join is go on facebook search keys and strings you'll find um a link there or just send us a private message and ask for the link and we'll share the links to you you open the links and then you can join our keys and strings whatsapp and telegram platforms and then the video dimension of today's show is going to be uh, uploaded on our YouTube page, which is, which is Danny Atta Music. Danny Atta Music. So you get to see me and then the wonderful person we have here in the studio. So go go ahead and subscribe, all right, and turn on the notifications so that you'll be notified when the video is posted. All right. So today I'm here with the CEO of Sweet Music Pro Audio. Okay um in the person of pastor abraham i'm going to let him introduce himself properly also for your welcome thank you danny yes and uh it's fantastic it's a great blessing to have you here and we're going to be talking about um uh, uh the annual saint Fair uh program that is going to be coming on in a few days actually and um you know um we're going to talk about that but before that he is a, a seasoned man of God. He's a seasoned musician. He has, you know, a wealth of experience that he can share. God has brought him a, a very long way. God has, you know, beautified his life. And God has used him to be a blessing. And uh, I, I believe that it's important he shares with us, you know, his life growing up, his experiences, and how far God has brought him and how come he owns um, one of the biggest, uh, you know, pro audio uh, company, all right, in Ghana, all right. So, um, Osofo, um introduce yourself to us. Who is Pastor Abraham? Thanks, Danny, for having me. Good morning to your listeners. Uh, my name is Pastor Abraham, Abraham Robert Siedu, that's my full name. Okay. You've actually been on this show before. Oh, yes, yes. yes. I Probably I come once a year. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I think I've been on this show on two it's previous yeah, occasions. Two occasions. So this yeah. is going to be my third. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let me speak naturally. I was born in the central region. Okay. And to parents that were civil servants and travel around, I mean, government puts them here and there. So I think I, I've traveled quite around in this country. Okay. And uh, we stayed in the Ashanti region for quite a while. By the time I was, I was coming to University of Ghana, I came from the Ashanti region, actually. 
Okay. I, I schooled high school at Kumasi Anglican, and then I came to University of Ghana and Lagos for my first degree. But along the line, we traveled to many places in the Ashanti, in the Obono region, and even in the north. I think I've stayed even at Bali before. I see. <laughs> and, and finally, after school in University of Ghana, I chose to stay in Accra. In Accra. And then later on, uh, we started ministry. I'm in ministry with um, Life City Church. My head pastor is Reverend Ernest. I'm a pastor of the University of Ghana campus branch. Okay. okay. Yes, so maybe that's a summary. The rest is probably how Sweet Music came about. Okay. And what God is doing with us over the years. Yeah. Okay, so um, you know, you, um, you were telling me before we started uh, the show that um, you used to um, play instruments used to do a little bit tell us about your music background like what you what type of form of music do you were you doing in church or do you do in church okay so um i i think even now music is part of my life there was a stage in my life that i was probably doing only music but i didn't live in accra most of my life so usually uh, people in accra they don't even know me okay uh, Probably people in Kumasi do know me to some extent. Um, but let's say growing up, I was very passionate about music in church. So I, I found myself learning how to play the keyboard because I was in a church and we had bought instruments. For the first time, we brought everything dedicated and there was nobody to play the keyboard. Hmm. So I started learning using my own ways and all of that, listening listening a lot. Mm. I mean, those times, the days of the cassette, my dad had this tape that had auto rewind. Those yeah. times, if, if your dad's tape had auto rewind, yeah. then you were the guy in town because really, if there's no auto rewind, you have to play the cassette to the, the cassette. end before you turn it you over. Turn it, turn it around. Then, yeah. So I, I, I was able to take the church keyboard home. I mean, they allowed me and I was learning my own way. Probably, I would say I'm a fast learner. After a while, I was able to play our worship sessions. This probably is is a town now, but maybe those times uh, you would say it's a, it's a it's a big place. <laughs> but I was just doing what I felt led to do. Mm. I think all those years, I realized also that my passion is for kingdom. Okay. So I'll just tell you the story of we had to hold a convention in another village so many miles away but unfortunately only one car goes to that village in the morning okay. so from where i am when the car moves and you miss that car that's the, end. that's the end and we had to get a keyboard at the convention i had to walk with the keyboard wow and i was i was going i was praying i was worshiping and i made it i think on the way so i you, saw you missed the bus no, I think there was we we needed a keyboard at that time. There was no keyboard for the church. We had to find one you from somewhere. Find, oh, okay. So and by the time we found it, it, the bus, the bus had, had left. Oh, wow. So I had to walk and praying going on my way. I met this tipper truck, and I stopped the I stopped them, and then they took me to the destination. Okay. So I was able to make it, and everybody was happy that we had a keyboard to do the convention. It was nice. At a point in time, I was sleeping at the church, hmm. guarding the instruments learning and all of that i mean over time i was able to play appreciably that i found myself playing for some gospel rock shows those times okay. in kumasi yeah, years ago used to be gospel <laughs> rock yes. show. now we yeah. just say concert right <laughs> sure maybe yeah <laughs> yeah and 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 i remember i had some time with um this musician called kweku jc Oh, those times okay. in the Pentecost circles, he was quite known. Yeah. So I, 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 I had an opportunity to be with his team, learn a few tips so that way back in my village, I was really on top. Mm. But I had this passion for, for ministry. ministry. I okay. had so, this so before you go yeah. into the passion for ministry, you know, a lot of mu uh, musicians, as instrumentalists especially, you know, on this show, we've had a series of, you know, sessions talking about instrumentalists. And it looks like we are we are on their case because we are instrumentalists ourselves, ourselves, and we know how instrumentalists can be in terms of you know their attitude towards um, church work and you know their personal relationship with the Lord. So how 
what would you say has you know influenced you starting as an instrumentalist and becoming a pastor because uh, i don't want to say that is not common but it's not something you see you know you know very often where you see an instrumentalist developing to become a pastor a lot of instrumentalists just want to be instrumentalist and just stay unspiritual you know but so to so, so share with us i believe this will yeah, so encourage I, somebody great great i think i, I want to take it from this angle first of all i believe that you should be a christian first okay i don't i don't think you would want to be an instrumentalist and you don't really care whether you are a Christian or not. If it's, and I agree that there are many people who are in church, but they are not in Christ. Mm. Sadly, per, uh, perhaps that's how we, where we find some of the instrumentalists. Okay. Uh, maybe they think, well, I'm in church to just play. And so when I'm done, if I have a contract with the church, they should just pay me and then I go. And all of that. I don't have a problem if you have a contract with a church. I, I don't have a problem with it at all. Mm. But my point is, if you are doing anything in church, the right way is to be a Christian first. Yeah. To be born again first. Yeah. Now, that's so important because once you're born again and you are spirit filled, it means you can pray to God and God can talk to you. Mm. So, so the, the bit about ministry, well, it's not too abstract. So long as you want to know the Lord and you want to grow in him mm. and you are reading the Bible, you are praying, you are serving in church, you are playing your instrument, God sees your heart. And in fact, many people don't know that as you begin to serve in church, God is actually preparing you. Yeah. So as all those things are going on, it's like, oh, this is what we do routinely. God will find a way through your heart. Mm. And when God speaks to you, you will know. You begin to see that, no, God is showing you something higher. Because the Bible says in Ephesians 4 verse 7, that unto every man is given grace mm. according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Okay. Every believer, there is a part of Christ that God wants to allot to you. Mm. So, so really, if you are just being a believer, you are just being you, serving in church, you are just being you. By the time you realize it's like God is speaking to you and you are hearing him over time, that connection will come. And it, you don't need to become a pastor. It's not even like you want to just pick and choose. Yeah. But then what really happens is as you walk with the Lord, you begin to hear God's voice. Mm. And then you begin to know where God really has destined you, you to be. Mm. So really, that's what a lot of people miss out on. Yeah. What is my purpose? What, what really has God programmed me for? There are some people, they are supposed to be music ministers and you realize that there's grace mm. for them, what they are doing. I mean, you can be a, a pastor who sings very well, mm. but you can see a, a music director and you're like, wow, this guy just has the grace for what, he's doing. what he's doing. I, I, I can't really do it what, mm. how he's doing it. So it's about finding your place of grace. Mm. And that will not come if you just think, well, I'm an instrumentalist. We came to church. We've played. We are done. There's this funny joke I often hear that whenever the pastor is, play, is preaching, a lot of instrumentalists are either on your phones or they leave the church. The service. And then they leave the church. When it's offering time, they come they back, come to, back play. to play. So, so I think in that case, you are not walking in the right order, even with God. Mm. Beyond playing instruments, man, you have, you, you have to be saved. You have a heaven to make. You, know, you have a God who must prosper you mm. beyond economic uh, challenges. So you, you better go all out. Be a believer. Serve God. I mean, feel free. Just, just like it, you know. And and honestly, I don't even fault anybody who plays for a church, and he's paid. I don't have a problem with it at all. But when I was when I was in Kumasi those days, I think I left my village. There's this church in uh, Asafo. Hmm. I, I used to like the prophets, and I used to go to play for them. Now it's their norm that when you come and play for them, they give you something. Give you something. They give me something, and I return it, to them, and they were surprised. Hmm. No, I was just being me. I'm just yeah. enjoying church and going. I'm saying that I'm, I don't have any problem with anybody who has a contract with the church mm. because if, you are, if a church has a contract with you, the church is also supposed to honor it. Yeah. So there's no problem. But then I was just enjoying myself. So if you are just being you, you will find your place of grace. Mm. You, see, you see that God is speaking to you and you see where your passion really is. Mm. That, that's, that's what I would say. You know, I, I, you know interacting with um, you know, instrumentalists, you know, the feeling that you get is... A lot of them, or let me say, some of them, are, are 
I don't know if I should say maybe they, they don't allow the word of God to dwell in them. Okay. Um, a lot of times, you know, when someone, usually instrumentalists start getting trained from a younger age. I don't know what usually really happens. I don't know whether from a certain age, they just get so lost in the instrument or maybe at a point, I don't know if it's bad company. I'm, I'm, I'm asking, what do you think is, is the reason why you know it's such a such a, a wide or a common thing to find an instrumentalist who is not spiritual who who doesn't yeah let me just end it at not spiritual okay. <laughs> now um i think there are general conditions and there's something peculiar also there generally anybody who goes to church and doesn't take the word of god serious it uh, is not concerned about prayer meetings i mean Maybe all he does is to come to church on Sunday because maybe Sunday uh, a lot of people are in church. Mm. A certain lady you admire will come to church. I mean, those kind of things. Oh, he has you, to he, he has to come to church because he has to play. Maybe. you are. So I'm even going, starting from a general, a general perspective. Okay, all Anybody, right. whether okay. you play or you don't do anything in church. Okay. If you are like that, you have already set yourself up to fall, to backslide, mm. to be in the church but lost as far as Christ is concerned. Yeah. You have already set yourself up that way. And sadly, we have a lot of people in church that way. Mm. You know, Some people even think that the fact that a certain big man of God from U.S. came and led him to Christ, he's fine. Mm. Whatever he does, he's fine. Yeah. Somebody thinks the name of my church is big. Mm. I, I do know the church I attend. This is the church I attend, so he's sorted. No. You, once you come into Christ and you join a church, you're supposed to know the Lord. You're supposed to grow. You're supposed to be praying. You're supposed to be feeding on God's way. You're supposed to be in the fellowship of believers. All those things are there. And I think a lot of people even generally miss out on that. that. Especially when people even begin to work. They think, well, I'm busy. They have nice, nice, fanciful excuses. I go to work Monday to Saturday. I'm busy. Sunday, I'm resting. I may pass through that kind of thing. You are, you are just missing the whole point. Mm. But then when it comes to instrumentalists, there's another challenge which is peculiar to gifted people. Let me mm. just go generally that way. Because number one, Gifts attract mm. a certain kind of attention, attention. which is not general. Mm. And even if you're a pastor, you are ministering the gift of God. Mm. There's a lot of attraction that will come to you. Yeah. So there are, there are certain things you have to realize that you, you need grace to master them. All right. Mm. The first is even the attention. Yeah. You know, the attention. I remember when we were growing up, whenever we went for a program, they give the instrumentalist a different kind of seat. Yeah. And after service, nobody eats, but the instrumentalist, they give them pie and <laughs> coke or something. Yeah. It was, can you imagine? It was one of the motivations why somebody wants to I know, right? Because you, 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 you always get the, a special treatment, like a yes. type of attention. So, yeah. so already before you get there, you have been enticed by the special attention that is given to them. Mm. How would you manage it? And then another thing I realized is that, I don't know whether it's fortunately or unfortunately because it can turn out for good. But if you have a skill, you can sing very well, you know how to play an instrument. If you're a guy, ladies tend to like to look your way mm. the more. So you're, you have another thing to manage, another issue to manage. It, let's say you're a guy. Mm. You're going to have a lot of ladies looking your way, and they would like to befriend you. They would mm. like to tell other ladies' friends that, you know that keyboard is, that's my, my friend. friend. So how are you going to manage it? Now, so how do, how do they backslide? Maybe let me just add one more thing. Is it fame, wealth, maybe two. Now, you, you're going to have this kind of fame. I mean, if you are one of the, the, the best guys in town, mm. we'll be mentioning your names. You will be on all the, I mean, in all the gigs. All everybody's the gigs, calling yeah. you. Yes. And then money comes in. Maybe they have to pay you something. Maybe somebody didn't pay you something. Mm. I mean, all those things. You, you have to be able to manage all these issues. Yeah. So, by the time, as, a, as an instrumentalist, Word of God, zero. Mm. Prayer, zero. I mean, fellowship in church, zero. All you do is rehearsal and playing. Mm. You are shallow. You are hollow. You yeah. are empty. So all you have is the music. Yes. You have no grace to handle the attention, mm. to handle the women, to handle the wealth, to handle the faith. One of these days I posted on Facebook that a lot of false men of God mm. did not start false. Mm. But there's a stage called wealth. There's another stage called faith. When you get to those places and you are not able to stand, mm. you will crash. Yeah. You see, you'll be crushed by that situation. So that's what happens to a lot of instrumentalists. And it's that simple. 
if you're going to really see what you do as ministry, as ministry, that means it's spiritual. That means you're not just thinking about your scale. Mm. So, for instance, as a musician, do you pray? Do you even think that I'm going to sing in church and it must minister to people and not be a performance or a show? Yeah. So, how do you approach your, your, your part of the service? Do you have a spiritual preparation for it? Do you even have a spiritual life as you? You know, if those things are not in place, the fact the fact that your gift is going to draw even more attention to you, that means you won't last. Mm. You see, yeah. Yeah. So so so, um, I, I think I think that is so. It's it's an issue of foundation. Yeah. You know, because um, um, if the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous That's do? Right. So I think that it's also um how the how the christians are brought up and of course the environment they find them, themselves in just like you said i think that it's 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 unfortunate that instrumentalists seem to get a certain type of attention all right so even from a young a young age you are treated specially so if you don't take care that can it can pass your head inside <laughs> and um, it can it can become you know an issue and um i remember having we've discussed on this show before um, you know the reasons why we think or we thought it's, it's in, I mean it's easy for instrumentalists to not take you know spirituality you know uh, important I mean seriously is one reason is even in churches pastors seem to let instrumentalists get away with certain things so if there's been a prayer meeting or there's been an evangelism evangelism something and um, certain church members don't come pastors usually do so why didn't you come this is but instrumentalists because i mean they weren't needed to play an instrument if they're supposed to pl come to play and they don't come they will get a call or they will get a visit but if oh we didn't need instruments so they didn't come usually they are so it's like instrumentalists are like oh th all they do is just a music so it's like you know th there's a certain shepherdoral attention that they don't get do you do you agree yes I, I i think i agree with you and it's a very sad reality and we have to do something about it mm. like like i said from the beginning i always resolve everything around you being in christ yeah i mean if you <laughs> if not for christ's sake why do we have to come to church and even want to play an instrument mm. so all we are doing is because a certain Jesus died yeah. and, and made a way for us to be born again, to be in church. Yeah. Right. So I don't, I don't want instrumentalists to see themselves as different. And I don't want pastors to see instrumentalists as different. As different. It's a trap. You know, sometimes like they don't want to say they are matter. It's like, Charlie, you don't want to... Don't I, I think come rather, again. Uh, and this is also a bit tricky. Now, the kind of services we hold in these urban settings, oh. uh, it brings us some kind of temptations. For instance, let's say you're a big church and your keyboardist has a ch an issue and is saying that if you don't take care, I won't come to church. Mm. I mean, the pastors usually want to think about, hey, if this guy doesn't come to church, yeah, we, we have trouble. a big program. <laughs> and even now that there's a streaming dimension, is, is the pressure is worse. Yeah. Hey, we are, we are going live. Okay, that, that's why a lot of times I'm on some pages Sunday morning, you see, keyboard is needed at Spinter's Road, yeah, this place. I've seen, thousand I've, Ghana, I've, two thousand Ghana, I've and it's very that. rampant. Yeah, I'm beginning to think that it's because a certain keyboard is decided to say, No, yeah, Pastor, I'm today okay. I'm not coming, so you go and play the keyboard. You so, know? so it's advertisement with even the, the, the salary, it's yes, that's yes. And <laughs> this one, they, they want to make it so juicy, yeah, so that you don't have to. <laughs> that's another matter, but I'm saying that it's because there's this fear. You know, there's this fear. It, it's, well, it's good. If the service is nice, it's powerful. Mm. I mean, we have to do. Yeah. But over time, probably, we have prepared ourselves to think that if the pianist is not there, the service is going to be bad. Mm. Well, th there could be some problems with music. I agree. Yeah. But it's like, how bad is it going to be? That has a, a huge toll on a lot of ministers. Mm. There should be a way around it. There should be a way around it. And so... Because of that, we would rather not touch the instrumentalist mm. so they will come and play. Yeah. So that they should come and do their part for us. Yeah. And, and I think the last time I was on your show, we were talking about how important music is to church. And I think I mentioned a research which says that 
about 20% of members that are retained mm. are retained because they like the music of the church. So, I mean, many things. Sometimes you don't even know what will make somebody stay mm. in church. So, I understand the pastors. And it's a very tricky situation. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a very uncomfortable situation to be in. So, it's like, hey, I would rather want my, my, my music mm. to, to go well. And you see, so whoever bring anybody how much you charge you will pay that kind of thing so you're going to pay two thousand ghana to somebody because you had a thousand ghana issue with your keyboardist mm. so maybe when you go and you reflect on it you rather want not negotiate or not argue with anybody that kind of thing but i think that's the solution mm. if we learn to grow our members yeah. and train them yeah. you see when somebody comes as an instrumentalist from outside yeah the contractual part is more like 70%. Yeah. The shepherdorial like part a, is like... It's 30%. more like a high lane. He's yes, not a sheep. Exactly. Yeah. But then if I got you to be in Christ, I got you to be born again, and then I took you to a music school, mm. now first of all, I'm your pastor. Yeah. And, and the pastor has to make sure that you are deliberately shepherding the person. Yeah. You see, in, in, uh, in my church on campus, I don't leave anything to chance. If you are a music director, I will chase you for morning devotion. Mm. When I call you and you don't, the following morning, if you call me back, you miss my call, I'll give it to you. Mm. I'll chase you. The following day, I'll call you. Because I've realized that if you are, if you are a music director on campus, and you, you are very talented. Mm. You are not spiritual. There are a lot of ladies in the choir, beautiful mm. ladies in the choir. Man, you, you are just setting yourself up to fail. Yeah. By the time I hear, this person has gone to do something, and that is very common of late in churches. In churches. So, I'm more interested in you being spiritual so that you'll be safe. Yeah. I will be safe. My choristers will be safe. My ministry will be safe. <laughs> and, and if you are not going to be spiritual, maybe not all pastors are privileged to be that way. But what, I have, what has helped me is that I found myself having to lead praise in my church. Though I'm the one going to preach. Mm. I remember there was one service. I led the opening prayer. It's not like something I want to do. I don't yeah. want to do that at all. Yeah. But when we started our ministry, we didn't even have a choir. We didn't even have music people. Mm. So I'll lead opening prayer. I'll lead worship, I'll preach, I'll lead offering, we'll close. Mm. And then we start getting some people. Sometimes I'm playing the keyboard and then I have an ear worn microphone leading praise from the keyboard. Mm. I mean, until we got people that want to do it. And I always tell them that you need this spiritual preparation for your life. Mm. So don't think that I just come to sing. I prepare to lead the praise the same way I prepare to preach. Yeah. So as a music minister, you must be praying. You, you, mu you must give this kind of shepherd your attention to them so they realize that no i cannot just run this ministry be in this church with my talent i need to be spiritual mm. i need an anointing i need god's presence in that case you you train people that you'll be surprised they wouldn't even want to call for money yeah you know in my church at the headquarters we have an engineer and a banker as the two main keyboardists the drama is a lawyer <laughs> i mean they, they don't take anything from church yeah but then they are happy to want to serve to god serve. playing yeah and some of these are people that have been playing way back from legon yeah. and all that time. yeah so if, if you're able to to raise your own people of course even if you are blessed with people who believe in your ministry and can receive the word of god from you mm -hmm. you can still influence them yeah but if it's just pure contract mm. i don't have a problem with it sometimes that might be the only way out but if every time it's pure contract then you must brace yourself up for people mm. who just came to play and go. Mm. Maybe the person is even coming with his girlfriend. Mm. So when they finish, when you start preaching, he takes his girlfriend's hand, they go. Mm. I mean, that's all you have. Mm. But something can be done about it. Mm. That's so, so, so meaning that, so it's a case of having a sheep, an instrumentalist who is a, a, a son or a daughter of the house, or a musician who is a son or a daughter of the house, against or as against a case of having a hiring like That's somebody right. who's just coming to you know uh, work for you or just play the instruments in, in church you know so I, I think that the way uh, just like you said to get around this is especially for churches that are starting I, I think that a lot of churches are in a hurry to have their music sounding great already so you you're starting a new church instead of allowing the church to, to grow naturally meaning that you are getting somebody who you who uh, you've evangelized to who is saved and you recognize the gift of music on them That's you right. encourage them to to learn you get them someone to teach them and let them grow gradually while you are shepherding them just like you said so that the person grows and becomes a child a sheep of the house and knows that this is a gift i've developed in church and i'm using it to serve god 
that way the person doesn't have the mind of oh i have to um i'm a hireling i have to be paid or so and so or you didn't pay me my this my dad you are breaching our contract so i'm walking away and all sorts of uh, i mean attitudes but what happens is that a new church the pastor is in a hurry to have the music sounding good so he posts an advert on the platform we need a keyboardist this this and that and mount will, will come so that keyboardist comes and he's probably leaving somewhere else to come <laughs> and he saw your juicy offer in his That's camp great. the next time he sees a better a offer, better offer he gone. will leave you so after a long time you will never have an instrumentalist or whatever a praise and worship leader that's if you are doing that with your worship your singers too you will not have somebody who is committed who is ready to stay with you in church to serve and you know serve god in the house and even help build a successful solid music team right yeah so um, i think for starters sometimes some of the churches uh, maybe depending on where they are and many other factors probably i don't want to go into you they may want to call a few people mm -hmm. to come and help yeah but i think what's the most important here is what's the policy of the church mm. concerning music development yeah you need one right from beginning you need one yeah so let's say if you have you have hired a few people to come around in your mind you're not going to be hi hiring, hiring highlands yeah. forever after a while yes. so as so, they are coming there should uh, be a plan exactly yeah. and and maybe this thing what i'm going to say might not be popular with people uh, personally i'm not somebody who is pressured by what people think yeah you know growing up from the village i joined ministries some they are, some of the ministries i joined are very big now in kumasi you know I mean, we used to go for camp meetings, and all that we had was a conga. Mm. That's all. Yeah. We would sing passionately, we worship God, we encounter the Lord, we sing a lot. We sing a lot, and mm. there was no piano. There was mm. nothing. It was years later that we had a piano with the conga. Mm. I mean, there was no pressure on us or anything. But it's like, I think people are too pressured in Accra. Yeah. When I started a branch of our ministry on campus, there was no instrument. All that was there was a microphone to say something. Mm. So I'll sing something. Yeah. And, and then I'll preach then something. Clap. <laughs> and then we're just three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then over time, I mean, we started singing. Yeah. We started singing something. We just take a praise song. Mm. So I didn't have that kind of pressure on me. Mm. Over time, as the ministry grew, now there's a lot of talent. Now mm. there's a whole music team, yeah. music director. Choir. I, don't even, I don't even have to worry. Yeah. So people should allow this room for growth. And sometimes it's a blessing because a lot of uh, one of the reasons why a lot of people stumble along the way is that they have not learned the process of growth yeah they just started off from point 10. yeah have you been at point one before mm. do you know what it means to start ministry and you are the only the only yeah. one there who can yeah. sing something yeah sing, and your members preach, are three usher. maybe one of them is your wife <laughs> i mean you should start from somewhere yeah it shows you the process of growth yeah and that will even help you not to be proud mm. because a lot of people like when they want to start they need some big money there big are some people money. when they want to start something yeah. they must be in some kind of auditorium yeah where rent, rent an expensive pastors, hotel this, like, that's why I said this <laughs> might be unpopular. It's not everybody who can take it. So yeah, if you I cannot know. take it, don't. For, I mean, yeah. don't be worried. Because we don't mean to offend anybody. Yes. We are just. Yes. You know. But I'm somebody that, without a mic, I I never get distracted when the sound goes off. Mm. <laughs> when the lights go off, no, no. Before the light came, we we're preaching. Yeah. But uh, of course, I understand. These, if the sound they is just there, enhance. Nice. They make it nicer. Yes. Yeah. But if you have trained yourself that every time mm. there should be line arrays left right center in the middle monitors before you behind you mm. that's where you started from yeah you don't know point zero mm. if you maybe you can still be humble and go but sometimes if you don't take care you look down on people mm. starting or whenever there's a little pressure mm. you you have to impress people you have to keep a certain standard yeah. so you let me just drop this on yeah idea. no 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 i think it's, it's a great idea i think that personally what one thing i've seen about god is god is he's not he doesn't feel pressure to impress anybody yeah you know, I've heard my bishop, Bishop Doug, saying uh, recently that um, the, the space or like the planets, the stars have been there millions of years, yeah. but they were discovered recently. That's great. You know, and things are still being discovered. And God is not in a hurry to reveal it, reveal them to us, to show him, uh, to show us how great he is. And, you know, a lot of things, a lot of times we see in the Bible when God does things, God always goes the, the smaller way. 
you know, the unassuming way. He says she's used the, the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. That's correct. You know, so um, I, I don't think you are saying anything wrong at all. It's, that's the way to, it's actually the nature of God to not impress people, to do things, you know, at his own pace, slowly, small, and that's as the scripture says, though thy beginning be small, yet thy, thy latter end should greatly increase, you know. That's so, right. yeah, I that's mean, powerful. it's, 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 it's great. I think we'll move on a little bit from um, this this aspect. Um, um, still around musicians in church and all of that, um, I think that one thing that um, I mean, I've heard some musicians saying, oh, um, I mean, this, this is what I do. Um, it's my full-time, you know, thing I do. So, I mean, how should I, why shouldn't I move on to the next church where I get the better offer? Because Charlie is the job I do. And what I, I usually try to, usually I, I, I would even ask you, how far have you gone with school? And you see that usually he's just finished SHS or the SHS results weren't very good. Okay, I'm not saying all of them are like that. It's just a few examples. And so it's like he doesn't want to continue school or maybe he's finished school, but he doesn't really want to find something to do, some work to do. And I would even ask that you just, because how much can a church pay you? Is that enough for you to settle down in life with, rent a nice home, marry a wife and look after your family? So you see that your life, you are under a certain pressure. You're always looking out for the better offer. All right, so you cannot concentrate in, in the house of God and serve God and really nurture your gift and become what God, what God wants you to become. Now, we've seen we have seen you, um, you know, develop uh, a whole company, okay, and you're doing big things. I want you to tell us, um, I believe that this will encourage and uh, encourage a musician, I mean, who is listening, okay, or who is watching, that you can instead of, um, always looking and expecting the church to do something because another thing is some people even stop church and go into the world to do their music because they say the church doesn't help the church doesn't support you the church doesn't do this but instead of having that dependency mind and always looking out for what the church can do for you you can also think of something you can set up for yourself yeah. and we've seen you done it so yeah. i mean tell us something okay so um before i come to me um maybe uh, the first advice I have for musicians, instrumentalists, even if you're a singer, whatever, first of all, like you mentioned, take your education very seriously. seriously. Yeah. Uh, when I was in school, I, I saw some people that, it, it's not just for music, but there are some people, there were some people when I was in high school, there are some people that said, well, I'm called, so I'm stopping school. Hmm. I'm like, you're just missing the point. <laughs> you, you realize that 10 years down the line, yeah. you can only preach to people who also dropped out of school. school. Because if you're a big church and lawyers and all those guys are there, you've got to be able to construct mm. and relate. Yeah. In fact, even there are some kind of jokes, <laughs> yeah. that examples that yeah. you can cite in a particular setting yeah. and nobody will understand you, yeah. you see. So, first of all, your calling doesn't mean stop school. Mm. So if you, uh, you think you are called as a prophet, I remember one guy that he said he was called as a prophet. He ended up dropping out of school because he was seeing some visions about people and stuff. I said, no, you've got to finish your schooling. Mm. In fact, if you can go to the master's level, PhD level, yeah. do. How, how far you can go, go. Mm. Now, to the musicians. So the same thing, yeah. foundational. Number two, don't deceive yourself that all you can do for a living is music. music. There is so much more you can do. I was just giving you an example that in my church, the drummer is a lawyer, mm. a very good one. And then the, the, the main music director is a banker. Mm. The uh, deputy music director is an engineer. Mm. Okay. And then the bass guitarist works in some firm. I mean, musicians, those who sing, they have their own businesses mm. and all of those things. And a lot of musicians think, no, no, this is all I can do. No, you can do more. Yeah. Number three, Think of getting a job or starting something. Not like don't let church be your main place. Mm. You see, a part of church is that we all came to worship God. It's a part. I'm yeah. not saying that's all, yeah. all there is. So I'm not despising your gift or contribution yeah. in church. But honestly, a part of church is that we all came to serve God. Yeah. Right. So if you can get a job, get it. You can do your music alongside. If you can continue your schooling, continue. Continue. Mm. Do something. Once you are earning, you will be surprised. Maybe you think a church pays you thousand, 
but you can get a job that pays you three thousand or yeah. two thousand five hundred, and you realize that if the church doesn't even pay you, yeah. okay, you will still be fine. Yeah. You see, in that case, you are you are you are better off. But you can do something. Actually, you can, you can. Except maybe you want to set up a music school or a recording studio. Mm. So, for instance, even if you think uh, music is all you want to yeah. do. You can set up a studio. Yeah. You can set up a school. Yeah. I just want musicians in church to think of doing something that extra yeah. that will bring you income. Yeah, because look, you are a very intelligent person. Yeah. You there's so you much are, inside can, of you. If you can do music, musical instruments, it means you are very intelligent. Very, very intelligent. Yeah. You know, so but it's just that it's unfortunate people just I think it's laziness to a certain extent. I don't I'm not saying, you know, that's the general thing, but I, I think it's laziness because you know the music it comes to you naturally you enjoy doing it so it's more of like you just want to do something you enjoy yeah. and and you know be able to earn money there is the place and there's the level where you get to and you know god is calling you into full-time music ministry or whatever it is depending on um you know the church you are in and what your pastor wants you to do there's a place for that but it's not that just like you said you you don't want to continue school you don't want to do anything and so i, I want to go into full-time music you know, it, it's 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 not. Sorry for interrupting. Please go ahead. Yeah. So so that that's my general advice to all musicians. Don't let anybody tell you that you cannot do something. Yesterday when we had our lunch, uh, we 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 had a lady singing. Who is a staff? Hmm. And she sings very well. Okay. She does music ministry with New Kai. She does it around, but she works here. Hmm. So it's not like okay, if her ministry cannot pay something she's stuck no she's doing something mm. i mean if you're a lady you can be a front desk you can be a customer service person you can do marketing you can do something and there's a lot you can do it's most of the time we've not brought our minds to something yeah i've seen a lot of ladies start something maybe they want to do something with their hands they want to start some juice business something there's always something you can do mm. you know i know one lady who is into catering and she sings mm. so there's something you can do that, that that's what i think i want to diffuse from people's minds that mm. no 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 it's not i can do music is all i do this is all i can do no music is what i eat from and drink from no <laughs> there's a lot more you can do there's you are just more. not bringing your mind to it yeah you know i i praise somebody's touched by this to to yeah, rethink yeah, 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 yeah. i believe yeah, but god then, is touching somebody yeah so you're asking about me yes whoa if i tell you i ever thought of having this kind of business i've lied to you okay it never crossed my mind I never received any prophecy about it. Nothing. So nothing. But I would say, you see, there's something about Christianity that a lot of people have not really tapped into. Christianity is so real. Being spiritual is, is the journey or is the pathway to being the best you can ever be. Hmm. And some people think that prayer is a monologue. You just go and pour out your perturbations to God. And then you dash out, hoping he does something, say something. Prayer is not like that at all. And I'm just going to show you briefly hmm. how this thing came about. When I finished University of Ghana, I, I did my national service at Gimpa. And I, I read sciences by chemistry. But then I was switching into IT already. At Gimpa, I was teaching IT already. <laughs> and after my service, I felt like whatever I was teaching, when I went there, they didn't have any syllables or anything for it. I had to develop everything for the whole course. I felt like, oh, I can start something like this on my own. Mm. So my first company was an IT center. Okay. Uh, from 20, 2010, 2010, 2012 or so. I think so. Or think, yeah, 2012. I think from 2012. 2012, 2014, I was having this IT center. And then in 2013, 2014, the Doomsock was just, I mean, becoming worse and worse. To the extent that the school had to close down. Mm. So watch it. We're having this 30 days prayer and fasting at church. And that season, my wife and I had met people who had lost their jobs. They'd been laid off from Anglo Gold and some of these firms that mm. needed power to work yeah. and there's no power. You know. And it was like, it's becoming a general thing. Mm. I was losing my business. I was freshly married and it's like, everything's going down. So I was praying. I said, God, I know that you know what kind of business I should do. Mm. Even in the midst of this situation where people are losing their jobs. So show me what to do. <laughs> wow. And before then, mm -hmm. I was running my IT company as my main business. 
Okay. I used to ship instruments for churches once in a while. Mm. I mean, when they call me, they have to wait for eight weeks. Not many people wait, so mm. it's not really like something you think is a business. Yeah. And then that night, I prayed with my wife, and then I, I saw a, a dream or a vision. I had traveled out of Ghana, opening bank accounts to import musical instruments to sell. Mm. When I woke up out of the dream, I knew God was speaking to me wow. to start this. When we started, I mean, it's not like, well, you're coming from a rich background, so your dad gave you a lot of money. <laughs> no, there was nothing to give. God, I think our first order was, was huge, 40 something thousand dollars then. And I was like, God, now what have you brought me into? Because mm. I don't even have <laughs> 1,000 CDs or mm. whatever. And then God showed me another way to raise the money. Raise the money. From churches. Can you imagine? We had a proposal, we took to churches, and a lot of churches bought into it. And our first consignment, everybody said, no, this guy is going to throw money away. Mm. The whites are going to dupe him. But I, was, I, was, I just knew God was leading me to something. In fact, even my bank refused to do the transfer. Because I felt like, no, this money is, is being duped. Mm. It's a fraud, fraud, everything. But I knew, I said, no, go on. I, I know God is speaking to me. And our first consignment came. We sold. The churches came for their items. And then, I'm cutting a long story short. Afterwards, we had a showroom. And we had some goods. Mm. And then we just kept increasing from there. Yeah. Every year, our financial position changed. And now, we have four branches. We are opening the fifth branch in December in Sunyani. Wow. And, and I think now everybody is accepting now mm. that we are Ghana's leading music instrument store. That's Remember it. when we started without showroom, we mm. called ourselves Ghana's leading, leading. music instrument store. <laughs> we were laughing at it was us. A prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> we were laughing at You're us. Prophesying to your future. One day, one guy came to the shop. He said, ah, but there's nothing in the shop. He said, you are leading what? Leading. <laughs> and then now five years down the line, six years down the line, I think God has brought us far. Mm. But watch it. This is the point I wanted to bring in. The, the place of prayer, talking to God. Mm. When you think you are at that crossroad, mm. talk to God. Mm. So as an instrumentalist, if you don't even know how to talk, talk to, God, to God, you see, that's what I'm saying. You've it. got to be a believer first. Yeah. Do you know God sees whatever is going on? When you, when you badly need money, as we say, God knows. Mm. And, 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 and the, the, the news is that he knows where the money is. Yeah. It's about how to connect you to where the money is. Yeah. So you see, we, we've got to learn to have this spiritual atmosphere around us. Mm. It's the safest place. Time will not allow. Maybe another time we'll just do full on how yeah, this whole thing started. Yeah. But I've seen the hand of God in this business. People, be, I don't even know anybody here. Mm. And I don't even think people know me. All they do is to hear about sweet music here and there. But it's the hand of God moving this business. And that gives me confidence that God just began with us. Yeah. Where he's taking us is, is even far greater. You know, This is powerful. It, and it's really encouraging. And I hope that people listening out there you know uh are being inspired by this you know to know that don't just give up don't think that oh there's not much i can do this i can't do anything about my situation i just want to do this there is much more you can do and just like you said it's a matter of um you know knowing how to pray and waiting on god how, and to, hear god's how to hear god's voice yeah. and trusting him to lead you and guide you and you would be surprised what 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 can you know what can become of your your life and your 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 musical gift yeah. you know our time is fast spent one i want us to talk about senku fair right okay. so senku fair as as you you all should know by now because we've been playing our yeah our adverts on sweet melodies praise tv on youtube facebook everywhere so sweet music sweet music is holding senku fair senku fair is ghana's first mm and biggest musical exhibition mm. we started in 2017 this is going to be our fifth year and it's actually getting bigger and bigger yes and bigger every in fact year. even in 2020 in COVID 19 2020 we had we had it, it was the biggest of all ever mm. that we had so it's happening right from this wednesday 24th to to monday 29th mm. november so that's just a few days from mm. now and six days of musical exhibition you and come it around it looks like the number of days keeps increasing right yes i remember I that one of the years it was just three, three days. days from 2017 it was three days 2018 three days 2018 i think it was four or five days 2019 four or five days 2020 we made it six hmm. and then this year too we are doing six now we are doing six because we realize that sometimes it takes some days for people to make decisions yeah so a lot of pastors like to come around the first day they want to see they want to ask questions mm. they are still deciding 
In fact, some of them even decide on Sunday. That's the why the fair usually ends on a Monday. <laughs> so on a Monday, they are coming with their final decision. Okay. And we're going to have over 1,000 products on, a, on display at the fair. And we are, we are giving 20% discount on every purchase made at the fair. I see. That's huge. So usually, this is the best time for churches to shop. To shop. If you're a school, you want to buy instruments for your school. Or even to get some instruments for your home, your a band, home, your whatever. Studio. Studio. This is the time to show because all the gear you've been hearing about, you've been dreaming about, will be there. And they are not just there. In every booth, you have people, resource personnel who are there, you, who will take your questions, take mm. you through. If you want a demonstration of the product, they will do for you. Mm. So you, you really know what you are buying before you buy, you know. And then, you know, in our first, we have seminars. We have live sound seminar, recording seminar, guitar seminar, keyboard seminar, drum seminar, where we have seasoned musicians in Ghana who come. Mm. They want to share their world of knowledge and experience with us. And it's free. Mm. You, once you are at the fairgrounds, you join every seminar you want for free. So mm. usually I tell instrumentalists, bring your church, bring your whole choir. Mm. You know, let them come and see. Let them come and hear. Yeah. Let them come and experience um, how some of these things play out come and learn something for free mm. you know and of course our live uh, performances we have uh, we have a new artist night we're gonna have over 30 new artists performing on our big stage mm. we have bands coming we have choirs coming and we will have our legends night this year we have stella seal coming okay. and we have reverend yorson also coming on the legends night wow. and on the sunday we have a huge bill we see your team coming tego sisters coming dave, Mus dave the music box coming and then we have Kaoklote coming. We have Brakweku also coming. We have many people coming on, on, on the Sunday. And then, of course, on the Monday, we open up for you, everyone to jam with your friend. So it's, it's one jams the other. Mm. So really, Senku Fair is, to me, is the greatest music festival mm. in Ghana. Mm. It's, this is the season for musicians. If you're a musician, if you're a lover of music, if you're a music pastor, even if you're a pastor, church administrator, your church, what you've been taking pro forma invoices and all, Come and see, Come and see instruments, yourself. compare, yeah. ask your, your questions, and then buy because you're going to get 20% off. Wow. I mean, that's, that's, huge. that's huge. So let's say your church budget for buying instruments was 100000 mm. You're going to get everything to buy at the fair. Mm. When you come, you give us the 100000 we give you back 20000 Wow. You can use it to buy uh, air conditioning <laughs> or some other things for your church. Well, you that's, that's, that's wonderful. Yes. That's yes, wonderful. And, um, and um, I, I have, um, you know, um, seen Senku Fair, you know, develop to become, you know, what it is, you know, today. And of course, definitely for some people, it's not just the, you know, if not even just coming to buy instruments, but just coming around yeah. and, you know, see the performances. I, I think for the performances is important because you see, one of the things that some choirs struggle with is that they have a lot of new people in the choir and then they lack confidence. Mm. So some of them at the rehearsal, they are good. Yeah. Before church, they are shaking. Yeah. Why? Because they are seeing 100 people, 200 people, 500 people. So, so, and some people have never stood on the stage. Come and see how people stand on the stage, how they compose themselves, learn. Yeah. You, when they are done, you can also walk to the stage and see how it feels. Yeah. I mean, this, this Senku Fair offers you the opportunity to just, just learn something, just better yourself as a musician. Okay. So you come, you see how people sing with composure and passion. You, you learn something out of it. Yeah. You see how people play, you learn something out of it. You know? And you yourself, you can touch an instrument, you can try your hands on something, mm. you can discover something new. So really, I think if you're a musician and you are listening to this show, mm. you really want to be at Senku Fair. Yeah. Just be there. If you've not heard of Senku Fair before, you just come see what it is. Okay. And you know that every year you have to save the date because this is the program for you, the musician. That's fantastic. So, so tell us, um, what time in the morning does the fair open? And yeah. What time does it close? So, I want to mention the dates again. We are okay. starting right this this Wednesday, Wednesday twenty fourth to Monday twenty ninth, and I often say you have six days, mm. which is six opportunities to make a decision to buy something. Yeah. Now, the fair opens nine a.m. and we close at nine p.m. Wow. So, Straight if you hours. yes, if you go to work. And you want to buy something, but you're going to close at five. Don't worry. You five thirty will be here. Through, Six yeah. p.m. will be here. Seven p.m., eight p.m., nine p.m. will be here. And the following morning will be here. We'll be here on the Wednesday, on the Thursday, on the Friday. The Saturday will be here. Now the Sunday will be here, okay. even from nine a.m. Because a lot of people 
they like to bring their pastors mm. and their church administration uh, administrators on Sunday morning after church. Okay. Right. So you after church bring them. You find us here. We'll here. People will be there to serve you, and then they will make their decision. If they buy immediately, fine. If they want to still go and have a board meeting, Monday will be there. Okay. So so, that, they, so, they so does the discount end at the end of Monday, the last yes, day? Yes. The discount will end on Monday, but we have some. We have two important announcements we are going to tell people at the fair. At I can't fair. disclose you don't now. now. Okay. So that's something special. Just right. come to the fair. There's something we'll give out to you which can change your 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 the day your discount will end for you. I <laughs> see. Right. And then we have another event coming up. I don't want to disclose now. I want you to come to the fair mm. and hear of it. Mm. But I think six days. Whoa, you can start thinking now yeah. what you want. You can you can ask your questions. You can go to our website or our social media handles. What product are you looking to buy? You can ask the, ra- the, the original store price now and then you take the 20% off. And again, the 20% is off everything. Everything. Not just big purchases. If you want to buy drumsticks, 20%. I if see. you want to buy a guitar pick, 20%. 20% if you want to buy an upright piano, 20%. If you want to buy line array speakers, whatever you want to buy. <laughs> Studio monitors, 20%. Just name it. And then even if whatever you want we are now bringing it and it's not in mm. you can even use the discount to lock your item down okay. and then come and pick it and you've already paid for it at a discount so mm. really you have every reason to come mm. and if you are hearing me i'm i'm inviting you to Senku Fair. attend Senku Fair from wednesday 24th we open 9 a.m to 9 p.m every day to to monday through to monday 29th we'll be there for you we'll serve you beautiful i see that um you know i follow your uh, Facebook page. I see live stream notifications pop up. Uh, I see that you guys do more of live streams now. Are there are the sessions going to be li- uh, streamed live? Yes. Sen- so Sen- from Kufa last sessions? year, we started streaming our sessions. Actually, we were <laughs> motivated by the fact that there was COVID and yeah. we have to keep the number. So we started yeah. streaming our sessions. Now we'll be streaming, and 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 those who are even outside are cry. No sweet melodies. Even reaches my hometown in yeah. Central Region. Yeah. So those of you wherever you are, if you are thinking, oh, I'm not in Accra, how do I partake in the fair? If you are, you have subscribed to our, our social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We'll be streaming some of the sessions. Okay. Some of them live. Some of them will, will premiere them and all of that. Because sometimes you have sessions happening at the same time and yeah. all of that. Yeah. But we try to stream a lot. Okay. And so if you are even outside Accra, okay. you can watch. You can, you can be, be part, part of, of them. Yeah. And if you're outside Accra and you want to buy, you can buy through phone, through WhatsApp, through our website, through our social media handles, whatever you want. This is our season. So, and, and wherever you are in Ghana, mm. we are not leaving you out. Yeah. Beautiful. Give us your website address, your uh, social media handles and all of that. And phone numbers, people can reach you on. Yeah. So, if you want to reach us, you can go to our website, www.sweet-music.com. Our music is... M U Z or Z. Okay. M U Z I C. So you can go to our website. We we have a new website that that we've put in a lot of products. The prices are there, so you you know. Okay, so this is the item I want. That's the price. Okay. I'll just That's take twenty percent off. Twenty percent. Then I know how much I'm going to pay. Okay. And and beyond that, we have created bundles. We are going to create about fifty bundles. Okay. So what are bundles like? Let's say you want to buy a keyboard. That's what we wanted to buy, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But we can add a stand, add a pedal, add a seat, mm. add a headphone. So you have a complete bundle for your mm-hmm. home. And you realize that because of the 20% discount, yeah. the price, the total price you pay might even be less than less the price than. of the keyboard alone. Yeah. We do same for digital mixers, stage boxes. I mean, and, and you know, at the fair, we have a lot of experienced sales engineers. Mm. Even if you want to get something for your church and you don't know how to do the combination, mm. I mean, we have your time. They'll we can advise, even go with you to look at yeah, your church, advise you, recommend what and it's for free. Be best for you. So you can go to our website, sweet-music.com. You can go to Facebook, Sweet Music, Instagram, Sweet Music, Twitter, Sweet Music, YouTube, Sweet Music. you find us there. And if you want to call, you can call 024 Six six five five eight two zero. The number zero two four six six five five eight two zero. Or you can also call zero two six 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 two two five four eight. Zero two six 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 two two five four eight. Somebody will attend to you. Everything you want to know about single fair, the person will give you that information. All right. Thank you very much, Pastor.
A, B, um, our time is up, and um, I hope you have been blessed listening or watching this show. It's been one whole hour of, you know, blessings. You know, he shared certain really, really wonderful truths with us. And um, I believe you've been blessed uh, watching or listening. Thank you very much, Pastor Abraham. Thank you too, For Danny. coming. Mm -hmm. And I believe we'll have you uh, more often on the show, you know, than before. I'm always available. Great, great, great. Thank you, guys. My name is Danny Atta, and the program has been Keys and Strings, your radio music masterclass on Sweet Melodies 94.3 FM. And like I always say, go to church tomorrow. Give your very best to God. Remember that Jesus is coming soon. And you're going to give accounts to him, I mean, about how you used your gift in his house. In his house. God bless you. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye. Ghana's biggest musical instrument till is back. It's Sinkle, Sinkle Fair, Fair Season, season five. 5. Six days of exhibition and discount sale. Up to 20% off all musical instruments and PA systems. Date Wednesday 24th to Monday 29th November 2021 at the Forecourt of Sweet Music Showroom at Jamota Mall 7. Side attraction, product demonstrations, seminars, live performances and musical concerts featuring Reverend Yossi, Stella Seal, Quissy Otting, Sago Sisters and, and many more. more. Entry is free and open to all pastors, musicians, instrumentalists, and all lovers of music. For more information, call 24 66 55820 Follow Sinko Fair on social media or visit www.sinkofair.org. This event is powered by Sweet Music. Prepare to shop big at Sinko Fair. Sinko Fair, the, the music, music lives here. here.